Dre Hannah Muller moved to Bristol four years ago to do a degree in business studies. He's now putting those hard-earned skills into practice. My name's Andre Hennemuller, I'm 23. I've got a part-time job at John Lewis, which is sort of two days a week. And uh, on top of that, I also do event promoting at Bristol clubs. But Dre's business acumen could be sharper. His expensive tastes have seen his wages disappear into a mountain of debt. Now it's a crunch point at the moment because um, I'm already paying off uh, £10,000 worth of student overdraft debts I've accumulated, and now I have to start paying back my student loan. With the repayments due in just one month, it's time to call in the experts. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry and lifestyle expert Jay Hunt. But will five weeks be enough to get Spendaholic Dre financially ship shape? I will keep spending unless I get some help, basically. Business Studies graduate Dre makes £425 a week from two completely different sources. Event promoting at Bristol nightclubs and a part-time sales job in the electrical department of a major store. Craving the very latest gear in technology as well as fashion has seen Dre's finances spiralling out of control. Currently I owe about £23,000. Plus. twenty-five, maybe. Yeah, £25,000. But it's not all fancy living. Lifestyle leftovers from his student days include shared accommodation and a quick-fix diet of constant takeaways. Is that with the potatoes and the chicken strippers? Yeah, I love that, please, and me. And a, um, with a bottle of coke. Dre's living on borrowed time as well as borrowed money. He's got five weeks to change his ways. And to help him out, lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has some thrifty solutions. You know, for £60, you're getting a really nice cut jacket, you're getting the waistcoat and you're getting the trousers as well. While psychological coach Benjamin Fry will be tackling Dre's emotional balance sheet. Baked beans on toast, I'm, I can't handle it, I can't handle it, it's, it's dirty. Today, Dre's got a pass to an audiovisual trade show. Dull for most. Savagely big. Sick. How much is those, Dave? But for Dre, it's a trip to techno paradise. I could just have that in my front room, above the fireplace. Bang. While Dre checks out the hardware, Jay and Benjamin sneak into his home for some debt detection. This three-storey townhouse looks grand on the outside, but inside, it's a textbook example of a student flat share. Oh, look at that. It's quite a lot of takeaway literature. Jay and Benjamin head for Dre's room. This must be his room. Either that or his best mate, Dr. E. A clue. In you go. Dr. Evil. Oh, look. He's Some... got a jeans display. That's a bit unusual. Nice little Maharishis here. Are those expensive? Yeah, they are. You're talking anything from 100 up to sort of three, four hundred quid. And look, here's quite a piece of expensive display as well. That is top of the range gear. The desk is stacked with gadgets. This, instead of a TV, costs you about two grand. At the trade show, Dre is being seduced by a new shiny projector, despite the fact he's already got one at home. Bat, 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 bat. That is... It's got everything. Yeah. I've, well, I've, I've tried to persuade him, like, on, on numerous occasions, not to go crazy with, like, spending money and everything, but it's just, he's, he can be a bit of a liability sometimes, you know? I really want one. It's just shiny silver boxes have always brought some kind of happiness in my life. Now, I've been looking at it for a long time, a long time. I can, I can feel it, I can feel it now, just going, buy it, buy it. Back in his room, Dre's bank and credit card statements are saying the opposite. There's a 12 grand student loan, a 10 grand consolidation loan, and 3,000 pounds piled onto his credit cards. Glasses, 894 pounds 60, wow. and that's yesterday. Meanwhile... I can't do it, I can't do it. I've got to have some self-control. 1799 on MPJ. Has it gone through? 
Despite his mammoth debt, Dre's convinced himself that today's £200 trade discount on the projector is just too good to resist. I'll pay for it, you carry it. Nice set up, isn't it? That makes another £3,000 blown on needless purchases in just three days. Back at the house, flatmate Andy gives Jay and Benjamin some background information. I notice he's got an awful lot of equipment in his expensive room. Expensive equipment. Yeah, expensive equipment. Very expensive. Big yeah. stuff. Does anyone get to use it apart from him? Yes, yeah, he wants that. He wants people to go into his room all the time. He likes the attention, really, so... Ah, he likes attention. <laughs> that's a good clue for me. So he likes feeling that that's the sort of hub of the house. Yeah. What's in here? Oh, look. Ooh. Da -da. Bollinger, lovely. Yeah. And look, more champagne. It's party town here, isn't it? Can you imagine a big night here with Bollinger takeaway and a couple of DVDs? <laughs> Time to confront him with a few facts of life, I think. Dre's financial records reveal two key areas of overspending. Hello, Dre. Oh, how, how are you? you? Jay and Benjamin have lined up a surprise for technophile Dre in the hope of getting a shock result. All right, Dre, have a look now. <laughs> These robots are worth how much money you've spent on gadgets, technology, computer stuff, all the things you really like. You have flown three and a half grand on techno toys, you silly boy. So there you go. Are you shocked to learn that you spent £3,580 on gadgets and technology in the last 12 months? Very shocked. Very shocked. It shouldn't be that surprising, considering he's just spent £1,800 on a second projector. It's nearly three months of your earnings. Yeah. And that's not all they've got boxed and ready. Now, come with me. Come and stand here. Now, this is the fast food mountain. That's a mountain of fat. That is a mountain of fat. You actually spend £2,860 in the past 12 months. And there are healthier and cheaper ways to eat. Just not convenient. It might yeah. be a bit more convenient when you get your credit Bank card statements. statements yeah. <laughs> Dre's faced the shocking truth. Now it's time to pull the plug on his high-voltage spending. Now, what we're going to do is just have a chat about how much money you've been getting through and basically set a budget that we all agree on that you are going to live on for the next seven days. It's not forever, it's just what we call the cold turkey process. So it's money that you will be using to spend on non-essential items. So after you've paid for your rent and after you've paid for your bills, this will be the money that's getting you through the next seven days. How much do you think or do you know how much you get through an average week money-wise? No idea. If you had to get... £250, maybe, maybe 300 Well, we have been through your statements and we've had a look and we thought you'd be interested to know that on an average week you get through £570. And that's not including any of your essential spending, that's just the stuff you choose to spend. So, given that that's how much you've been spending, how much do you think you could live on for the next seven days? 100 quid? I think that's... Not, yeah, I reckon 100. I reckon I could do 100. What do you reckon? Oh, that's not a bad opening gambit, is it? <laughs> but I think I'd like to press you a bit to improve on 100. 60. What do you think, Jay? Well... That may come That, that is one bit. night, like, spending alcohol-wise occasionally, so... Yeah, you may find that you have to change your habits a bit for the cold turkey week. Yeah. It's kind of the point. 40? Cold... 40 quid. I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Why not? Yeah. Why not? I reckon I could probably do it. Do you? Just £40. Pounds, just £40. Pounds. I tell you what, let's make it 45 because I just want to make sure that there's a little bit of a buffer because I think you are being really good about wanting to try. Think about all that money going into the paying off the debt pot okay. yeah. and how good that's going to make you feel. No pain, no gain. Absolutely. I was really shocked to start with, like, just seeing how much money I spent in a week. I didn't actually have a figure in my mind. The budget, 45, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be either drinking or 
eating, and I probably prefer to eat, I think. Salam ala bibi. It's day one of Dre's cold turkey, and the smooth talking salesman is on the blag for a cheap night out. Westlife, you ch chumps. Well, drinks are 150 all night tonight, aren't they? Do you reckon Andy and Judd will let, us in for, let, will let me in for free? Tonight's diary may be yeah, sorted, but a £45 budget won't be easy to stretch. Dre is going to need a cheaper way of feeding his £50 a week cigarette habit. Flatmate Dave has a cup price solution. Yeah, try it. Light it up and I'll try it. <clears throat> I really don't. Because if you've got to think about it a bit more and roll it up and... Dave's cheap smokes leave Dre gasping. But one thing he will be swapping are the expensive taxi rides to work. Going cold turkey means the ex-public schoolboy has to brave Bristol's public transport. Oh, rams. Um, and it goes the long, long, long way round. It's only about a 10, 15 minute journey by car, but it's long. Really long. Cheers, thanks very much. The new budget has frozen out those little luxuries. But the £1.40 bus trips are a lot less than the usual £16 cab fare. Three days later, and Dre's supplies are running low. Only the alcohol's mine. None of that's mine. I've got an enchilada kit. I need meat. Uh, I think Flatmate no Dave's a dab hand at pinching the pennies. So I'm going to cook you beans on toast and show you how good it is. You can put cheese and anything in them, really. Very diverse meal. I don't think you can use the word diverse with baked beans. You can buy beans with sausages and a cooked breakfast in it as well. How good is that? Dre's beans on toast has cost £10 less than his usual takeaway pizza. But how long can he stomach the help from his friends? This is boring. They eat more exciting food in prisons. I'm still doing the same things that I'm, I'm used to doing every week, like going out to the clubs and meeting people and going out and having a good weekend, but I just have become quite reliant upon my friends to kind of help me out. I don't want to constantly be doing that, to be honest. We've got uh, Blanco, Blanco coming down. Are we gonna do, is he going to do two, two hours? Is he yeah, we get, we get him to do two hours again, and uh, we get Ike to do like the main set. With just 36 hours left on his yeah, cold well, turkey budget, Dre's sorting out the DJ list for an event. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry drops in to see how Dre's coping with the mental challenge and to offer some moral support. The food has been a real, real problem. Yeah. Um, baked beans on toast, I'm, I can't <laughs> handle it, I can't handle it, it's, it's dirty. Could you carry that on forever? No. What would happen? I feel like a pikey. Well, I think it's interesting because what you're talking about is that you're spending money not so much because you need to buy something but because you want to avoid a feeling of X, Y and Z. So that's going to be some of the stuff we get into when we have our chat together later on in the week. OK. Um, Benny, you tell me, what have you noticed happening with Dre this week? Uh, well, he's basically, he's been out and about as much as he ever is yeah. um, normally. But um, I have noticed I've been having to pay for a lot more taxis. Yeah. Um, and also he's been phoning me up for a lot more lifts as well, yeah. you know, to be taken around and everything. And um, I'm, t I'm picking up the slack on, like, you know, paying back, giving out some, like, free cigarettes and stuff. Yeah. If, if Dre never had any money ever again and he had to live like this every week, yeah. would you mind? I wouldn't, I wouldn't really mind, you know. I mean, friends are there when, like, you know, everyone, everything's fine. But when everything yeah. goes a bit, you know, pizza on wrong, you know, that's when you, like, you know, he help out and everything, do you know what I mean? Sure. This is only for, like, a couple of weeks, so, yeah. you know. Do you think Dre has the kind of friends who can rally round in a crisis? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, definitely. Yeah. So uh, getting people to help you out isn't actually as bad as you thought. I mean, it might feel bad, but I don't think other people are responding. No, to yeah, I know what you mean. I'm as you mean. might have expected. It seems like so far it's been really successful. Don't let us down on this last day. I don't want you going off with Ben and losing it in some nightclub uptown. It's Benny cracking Patrick. point, mate. It's cracking point. <laughs> Dre's got just two pounds and ten pence left to see him through the last night of cold turkey. As usual, his bedroom is heaving with flatmates, which is perhaps where Dre should be staying. Some of us know when to stop spending money. I'm after to let myself go and spend ten pounds. 
Dre catches up with some friends, but he doesn't want to blag any more free drinks and can't afford to go the rounds at this pricey bar. He knows somewhere else where he can get a cheap drink, but the real cost is leaving his mates behind. You can hear the cheese. Oh. It's murder on the dance floor. But you better not kill the groom. DJ, gonna burn this goddamn house right down. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Everyone else is absolutely hammered in there, and I just feel a bit out of the social circle. It's a, it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. Everyone else is having a really good time. Drunk as hell, and I'm sober as a judge, unfortunately. I'm hungry. I'm really hungry. I really fancy a tasty kebab just to settle my stomach for the night. With just hours to go, Dre's course of cold turkey can't compete with the lure of a lukewarm kebab. Benjamin and Jay have checked out Dre's lifestyle and given him a dose of shock therapy. Dre saved a whopping £525 in the first week, but found the cold turkey diet a little hard to swallow. They eat more exciting food in prisons. If Dre wants a permanent release from his £27,000 debt, he'll need to tackle the root causes. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry suspects there are some underlying emotional issues that need looking at. I did notice when I went to see him that he mentioned issues kind of related to status, really, around the money and the food that he was eating at home. And I think this shows that he may have some emotional issues connected with money and how he feels about himself and how he feels other people perceive him. And that's something that I'm keen to explore with him today. So talk me through the difference between someone who goes into a shop and loves looking at stuff, notices things they'd like to have, realises they can't afford it, and you, who looks at stuff, sees what you want and buys it anyway. I get a buzz out of spending money. Right. That's, it's like a hit of happiness, but it definitely has a short-term... Right. Happiness effect, you know, of wow, I've got you know the new latest thing, or oh, I've got a real, I've got a nice pair of trousers today, or it's yeah. almost like a sense of achievement, almost. Mm. If I put the two concepts of money and your family side by side, what comes to mind? Not a lot of. Okay. Well, after my dad left, my mum just stripped the house. There was nothing there. So it went from being a typical family home. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, we had everything in the house. You know what. what what we consider modern, if you know what I mean, is in like mm. video TV um, and the hi-fi. You know, my dad, had, my dad had a really good hi-fi back right. in the day. Um, so what happened to it? He took it. He took it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we know it started, started with you know the record collection. Like my parents did. I bought that. I bought that, and you know that was one of the first physical things. Because I used to look through the records. I used to love looking for my parents' records. You know, finding out Anita Baker and Michael Jackson Prince records. You know, I used to love going for my parents' records. And obviously, records they were you know twelve inches. They were big. It was colourful. It was you know it was just interesting. That was the first thing that I remember really how things started disintegrating in in physical terms. Yeah. And then obviously my mum after that was just like, well, pff, I don't need this hi-fi. I don't need your TV. I don't need your video. And then. The furniture just got thrown out, the carpets were ripped out, and then it just became a... A box. A box. A shell, a husk. And it started with the records, though. And actually, it's the first thing that you kind of started on your own trying to put back together, wasn't it? Now you say it like that, yeah, it, it is. No problems. As a student, Dre was burgled and lost much of his precious electronic and music collection. He had a strong emotional reaction to the theft. Um, but my turntables got stolen, and I just lost the plot for about a week. Didn't really speak to anyone. Um, I got pretty, pretty messed up. Can I suggest that maybe it reminded you of 
some of the worst times in your life when all the stuff started to disappear from the house. Possibly. But you noticed that you had a very strong emotional reaction to it. Oh, yeah. Well, I, d I don't buy records anymore now. I can't do it. I cannot do it. It used to, it, part of my routine every day in Bristol was record hunting. Mm -hmm. I used to go record hunting every day, and after the turntables got stolen, I couldn't do it anymore. I, it, I found it so painful going into a record shop, not being able to buy records, because I couldn't play them. But maybe you were contacting at that recreating event the pain that you actually felt when you were a kid and the records and the hi-fi disappeared with your dad. Because really, you didn't just lose the records and the equipment, you lost your dad. Well, the other thing that was quite bad is my dad actually bought me the decks. Your but dad bought you the decks? My dad bought me most turntables. There you go. You know, you started talking about how great it feels to go shopping and come back with stuff. It's not really the stuff you're coming back with, is it? It's the kind of power to get what you need yeah, in life. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, that's a fair comment. It is power. Mm. It is power. And having that kind of power is... Anyway, any kind of power's great, and, you know, it's, it's addictive. Yeah, very. Especially when it's so easily got well, by just going it. into a shop. That's it, it is. So let's divorce money and power and get to you some inner power. Personal power is totally unrelated to financial power. Really? Yeah. OK. So we've got to give you some resources to feel that you have power... A, to cope with these things if they do happen, and B, to put yourself in a position where you're actually strong and can get what you want, but you don't have to spend more money than you have to do it. Okay. All right. Benjamin feels that Dre's been using the power of the pound to replace the emotional security he lost during his parents' divorce. So Benjamin wants him to find some inner power instead. But first, it's up to lifestyle expert Jay to set some long-term limits. Now, Jay, what I've bought here today is your new spending plan, which is a much more realistic budget for long-term that we can go through. I mean, what is apparent here is that your average monthly spend has been £2,916.50, and that means that you've been overspending by £1,074.50 every single month. OK. Takeaways. <laughs> You've been spending £238 a month on takeaways. We're recommending that that is absolutely slashed down to £50. Pounds. £50 pounds a month. I have to see. I have to see. Clothing budget. You're spending £400 a month, and we're recommending that that goes down to £100. Some self-discipline. Yeah. Good buy designer clothes. <laughs> Electronics, we're going to slash that to 150, which I think is quite generous because what we are acknowledging is that electronics is your absolute passion. So we are still giving you a bit of money to spend on it, but we're still cutting back. I mean, do you think that's quite fair when you look at that? Um, yeah, it is. It is on paper. I've, I've never really written down my finances. I've just, I just spend. Benjamin and I are going to be here with you with lots more ideas to try and help you stick to this. What I'd like to do is look at clothes and takeaways as two key areas where we could really be a lot more imaginative with your money. Jay plans to knock Dre's £400 monthly clothes spend down to £100. That won't even buy one pair of Dre's favourite designer jeans. An alternative is called for. But just how open will Dre be to Jay's vintage approach? What would be your idea of hell, a sort of head-to-toe look? Corduroys. Anything that's 270s. I hate hand-me-downs. I, I like fresh, nice, new clothing. I hate charity shops. I didn't have any choice in what I got to wear. It was kind of selected by my mum through what was available through her own budget. So it literally came from other friends as hand-me-downs yeah. or relations. And I've never liked wearing what other people have worn before, it just makes me feel cheap. Mm. I think what happens is that we take very, very strong messages when we're children, and sometimes it takes a long while for us to reprogram our brains. You know, you're not that person who has no choice anymore. It might be worth saying to you, let's go and explore some vintage options so that you can keep within your budget, but you still feel like you're dressing like Dre. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's not nice. bad. 
Wow. That looks really quite good on you, doesn't it? How do you feel wearing that? Strangely feels like it's because it feels old, but it, yeah. it's still quite baggy and it, and it still fits. It's it's a bit it's a bit strange, but it's it's quite comfortable. Because that is a suit from the forties, and suits then were cut much smaller. I mean, it's interesting that maybe coming vintage shopping is going to give you more choice than you would have if you're sort of in conventional shops where everything is sort of swamping you. It does make me feel. Like I'm successful, like I should be selling some TVs <laughs> right now. So you've got the jacket, waistcoat and trousers and the whole thing in here is 60 quid. That's ridiculously cheap. Yeah. Ridiculously cheap. Cool. I quite like this one. <laughs> that is quite individual. I can guarantee you there'll only be one of these <laughs> in Bristol, probably in Britain. really nice. The thing when you're buying leather is just to check, you know, if it's going to go anywhere, it's going to have gone under the arms. But actually, this one's completely fine. I think it's really nice. Sign of good quality? Yep. Hey, wow. Look at that. It's, it's cool. That it is, is a this cool, is cool jacket. This is very cool. I actually really, really, really like this. I mean, it kind of makes it feel a bit more, like, worn. It doesn't feel, mm. like, fresh. Like, you would see, like, those kind of new kind of Hugo Boss kind of, like, leather jackets. They're very rigid. I mean, that is one of the advantages of vintage, you know, when it comes to denim and leather, is that it is bashed up. And as you say, it doesn't feel like you've got to break it in yourself. How much would you expect to spend on this sort of jacket? About £300. Well, this one is 65 I, I mean, it does really suit you. And this will go with every pair of jeans yeah. I've got. Do you think you're starting to change your mind a bit about vintage for Dre? I think I'm broadening my horizons <laughs> the more we try on. You can always ask if there's any chance of a discount for cash and you get more chance of that when you get individuals who own their shops and not chains. Any possibility of a discount at all? Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth, worth a, a try, try, though. Worth a try. Worth a try. Jay has convinced Dre that vintage can be cool and cost-effective. Having pinned down Dre's psychological spending triggers to his parents' divorce, Benjamin's doing some more detective work. It's been four years since Dre visited the family home in High Wycombe. Benjamin makes the trip to meet Dre's mother, Dilu, who's a nurse. And really, I just wanted, from a third-party perspective, your take on him and money and how it all began and what's been happening and stuff like that. I think I'll put it down to Andre was thoroughly spoiled by his dad. Right. And always buying the first toy which came out, he'd get it. Andre was about six when we decided to uh, separate. Right. Uh, it was quite traumatic. Mm. Mm. I think I was quite depressed at that time too, but I didn't mm. realise. And I think I was going through a stage where I was questioning what life was all about. Mm. <laughs> The emotional trauma of her divorce led Dillo to sweep away all physical reminders of her marriage from the house, right down to the carpets. But she put paying for Dre's private education before replacing these material possessions. At that time, he was going to a private school, and I felt it was very, very important that he had the continuity of that. So uh, I think I was doing about three jobs at that time to keep him in the private school. I guess it's sometimes hard for the children to have that perspective at that age. Because yeah, all they see is the yeah, fighting. The fight, and, yeah. and I suppose, and the fact that Andre didn't get all his new gadgets, that was, that was the main thing for him. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like everything that he's done has been to try to bring back mm -hmm. the physical manifestation of what he believes he lost. Like, you know, the, the music, the records, mm -hmm. the stereo equipment mm. but of course it's not enough mm. because that's not where the real pain mm. lies and i think it's really important for him to find another way to get that stuff that he really craves which isn't actually shiny toys because mm. when you first meet him you can think well he's just a spoiled brat he just wants what he wants Once. and yeah, he goes and yeah. gets it and he doesn't yeah. care the consequences yeah. and i suspect you feel like that sometimes yes yeah i've, I've seen that part of him yeah 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 but I'd like to encourage you and everyone, mm. really, to look at the behaviour in a different mm. way and to look at it and say, hold on, this isn't a guy who's saying he wants the mm. latest mm. CD player. It's mm. a guy who's saying he misses his dad mm. or missed his dad. And when you think about him like that, of course, he's much more sympathetic. Mm.
because who could not be sympathetic with a young kid who's been through a difficult time in the family and lost her? I know he's got anger feeling towards me, so I think we need to sort those issues out as well. His mother finds Dre rather spoiled and childish with his behaviour with money. I really want to try to help to bring them closer together, but to do that, Dre's going to have to find the power to confront the situation and actually engage with it. With three weeks left of Dre's five-week plan, there's still one key area that needs cutting down to size, and that's the £240 a month he spends on takeaways. Lifestyle expert Jay has got the raw ingredients to rustle up a low price plan of action. Now, Dre, Andy has agreed to help us out here because what I thought we might do is introduce real food to the takeaway house, yeah? So what we're going to do today is make a pizza for about £3 and put them in the freezer so that when you come back late at night, it's ready to go, yeah? yeah cool. So worth a go? Definitely. All right, get really chopping. <laughs> so what we're going to do is take an onion and a pepper, chop them and thread them on these skewers, and then we're going to grill them along with the sausages to go on the top of the pizzas. You can kind of create how much you want, whether you want parmesan, mozzarella, both, as you'd like it. And if we cook them in bulk, we can put them in the freezer so that when you come back late at night, you don't have to do takeaway, it'd be a bit more convenient. Just throw them in the freezer. And just like chuck that. them in the freezer. Oh, Easy. Right. If the new habit might be Wednesdays we make food, it's in the freezer, save some money, you know. It'd be a better routine. Yeah. Definitely. Now, I know that a large portion of the budget that you spend on takeaways comes from kebabs, doesn't it? My Your favorite. particular favourite. Yeah. So I thought what we'd do today is make some kebabs and then Andy's going to get going making this marinade. So first thing is we need to melt this butter. OK. OK, how, would that be about the average size, then? What, for a kebab in a shop? Yeah. A bit more than that. A bit more? Yeah. Oh, well done, Andy. OK, you've got to mix in with that butter some lemon juice, yep. a tablespoon of soft brown sugar and crush up a garlic clove. You want some black pepper in there as well. Sugar. And then what we've got to do is wrap them in foil and stick it in the freezer. Cool. How easy was that? Took about 20 minutes. That is a lot of money saved there and it wasn't that difficult. Right. 23-year-old salesman and event promoter Dre Hennemuller was splashing out on technology, takeaways and designer labels at an average of £1,074 a month. Dre is halfway through his five-week plan. He's cut down his spending, but the new regime is proving tough. I'm having to like, like write down and be conscious of how much I'm spending constantly and I have to think, oh, I don't need that, really, because I'm on this budget and... I'm just used to living a different kind of kind of lifestyle. And I'm just having to kind of wake up and try and work around this lifestyle here. That's just a step down or two, two or three steps down, I would say, from what, I'm, what I've previously been doing. Faced with some uncomfortable home truths, Dre heads for a designer discount store for his usual quick fix. A bit of retail therapy. I need to buy some more clothes, really. I want to buy some more clothes. I'm feeling a, bit, a little bit guilty, but spending my money here, I'll get more for my money than I would do if I went to another shop, so it's not that bad. The whole budget and some of the psychological aspects of it all, it's stressing me out a little bit, so I just need a, bit of, a little bit of therapy. I don't think Jay will be too impressed, but I think she'll understand. And it's, it's, it's reasonably priced stuff as well, so I don't feel so bad. Dre reveals why the vintage clothes shopping has left him less than satisfied. After I got that leather jacket, like the zip broke within a day. I can still wear it, but I... it's not as nice as buying something that's brand new. No idea how much this is going to come to. Hiya. Oh, yeah. 
It's 120.93. I would have spent that on a pair of jeans. It's a 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 125. Thank you very much. Three or t-shirts, pair of trousers and four hats. Not too bad. Thanks very much. Thank Cheers. You. Trey has more than blown his £100 clothes allowance. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt sees that new tactics are called for. I am quite worried about Dre on his budget because I think some of the work he's been doing with Benjamin has brought up quite a few psychological triggers, especially to do with how he feels about poverty. And I just think that that could be encouraging him to go off his budget. Dre has grand career ambitions to set up a record label with his partner, Benny. They've taken on some new, if pigeon-infested, premises. Dre wants to get some sound advice from people already in the know. And Jay spots an opportunity to get Dre back on track. What I know he is doing is coming up to London to have some meetings about setting up his record label. I mean, if he books in advance and gets on a coach from Bristol to London for £1 and spent, instead of spending £97 on the train, then he can use that £97 to pay for a driver and a car to drive him round to those London meetings, which I think is something he would really enjoy. It's a long journey, man. That's too long, mate. Next time we take the train, yeah? Train, man. Trains. Now, this is more like it, this mate. This is, is more, more like, like it. it. Oh, man. This is cool. Here's yeah, the Megabus. From Megabus One to pound. Mercedes. <laughs> Blacked out windows, nice leather, chauffeur driven. Get used to it. <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> I love these houses, man. I love these houses. See, one day all this will be yours. No, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Mayfair, Park Lane, Bond Street, man. Bare amounts of close shops. Don't let me out the car. Some knowledge, man. Some knowledge we need. Exactly. It's key, man. It's key. Yeah. Spending £30 of the money saved on the train fare is a welcome treat and allows Dre and Benny to arrive ready to talk business for their first London meeting and still £66 in pocket. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Paul, nice to meet you. But record label owner Paul Arnold's got some tough questions. We well, you said you've already got a studio. Um, who's, who's paying for the studio? Basically, we're looking to use the space not just as a studio but just as a, as a kind of facility as well for other people to use and, and rent all that way. What if no one rents it for the first six months? Um, it's all out of our own pocket then, it's isn't all, it's, it? Right. It is all out of our own pocket but I mean, we find the money if we have to. So would you be able to cover six months of rent in your studio if you had no income coming in, if you hadn't put a record out? Currently at the moment I don't think my personal finances are structured to the best that they could be. Label boss Paul has got Dre thinking realistically about the real costs of running a record studio. So it's just as well Dre's dropped the Mercedes for their next meeting. It's not the sort of business where you really want to make that many mistakes. If you put out a few a sequence of records that don't really go down too well, yeah. you could suddenly find yourself in a little bit of deep water. Do you have any? Do you do you have in mind any sort of budgets, or do you, do you have in your mind? Oh, we're going to put do this, and it's going to cost us this much. No, the budget at the moment is, is basically like we're, there ain't no budget. There ain't no budget. We, right. we basically we've got we've got the space. We're paying for the space, and um, and then that's that's it. Mm. A lot of people start record labels. They go around. They find people that they think are talented. They get the checkbook out, and from that point on. Is they're going downhill. You know, you have to think about the finance, you have to think about money. Me, I'm kind of naturally, like, I'm a saver and a hoarder anyway, you know, so okay. it's not that big a problem. But you two look kind of flash, like, you <laughs> like going out and spending money and stuff like that. And a lot of people in the music industry, that is where they fail. They want to go out, they want to spend money, wear nice clothes and all that sort of thing, and play the cool record label boss before you know it. They've got no money left, and every, all the rest of us are sat there going, ha ha, what an idiot. So. Bear that in mind, I would say. 
the London label owners have given Dre's business plans a wake-up call. Back in Bristol, and with Dre's spending triggers linked to his parents' divorce, he needs to tackle these issues with his mum. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry has a plan to help Dre discover some inner power. The martial arts is a great way to find that sense of comfort within, that sense of power that comes from feeling really solid within yourself. Aikido actually means the way of spiritual harmony. Uh, a better translation in English would be the way of peace. Um, because I means harmony, ki means spiritual energy, and do means way or art. You start off very gently with some breathing exercises and slow breath out. When you're doing this, try and empty your mind. Just try and focus your mind just purely on your breathing. In again. Hold that breath. The mind is calm, your body's relaxed. It's about using your opponent's energy. So he's strong this way. Quite tough when we push him over. But in this axis, behind, very weak. Aikido is a non-competitive martial art. It shows that power can be acquired through technique rather than brute strength. Okay, no effort at all. And that's how Aikido works. Yeah, you're just... If I okay. move my whole body... Yeah, you're using it... I can see, I can see I'm you mean. this. Shoulders, OK, and your hips. OK. Towards me. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Towards me. <laughs> OK, OK, right, OK. <laughs> so that, up that way. Oh, right, OK, I see. As Drake cottons on to the power that Aikido techniques can provide, his confidence begins to soar. Drake, you look so much more confident. You look so much more powerful. And almost like in physical stature, like you're taking up more space with your body. How do you feel? How does that feel to be able to throw a bigger guy over with so little effort? I wouldn't have thought it was possible. No. Did you feel that conflict is not so difficult to manage as you thought? Not just physically, but perhaps also kind of emotionally? Uh, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Well, little it's, bit. it's one lesson. And with that in mind, I want you to, as a quid pro quo for coming here, I want you to think about going to see your mother and talk to her a bit about all the things that have remained unsaid from that time in your life. Bearing in mind that you have seen here today that you have power and you have qualities that you don't necessarily always recognise. I can try. Yeah? Yeah. Will you? It's a deal? Yeah, yeah, OK. A deal. I OK, a deal. give no. me your best shot. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you know, it felt empowering to do something like that. Like, I would never have thought I could have thrown that guy. He was huge. I did all right, I did all right, you know. I didn't really think I could, could have done what I did, you know, being able to throw somebody over that way. Um, but I realised it's just down to, you know, confidence within yourself. It's been four years since Dre visited his mum, but with his newfound confidence, Dre is taking Benjamin's advice and has arranged a meeting. I haven't seen my mum for a long time, so it'd probably be emotional, which is going to be quite bad. But, yeah, I am apprehensive. It's going to be really, really but weird. Hello, Andre. Hi. How are you? All right. Are you competing with Mum for the hair yeah. colour? <laughs> Dre hasn't been back to the family home in High Wycombe since leaving for university, so he's opted to meet his mum on common ground. Their shared love of music means the perfect place to get together is a local record shop. No, no. I got that. I have got that. Do you remember the records? I know. Duran Duran. No, no. <laughs> no, we're 80s. We had some good records. We had everything. Michael Jackson, Prince, Aretha, yeah. Turn the Music Up and <laughs> Singing Around the House. That's how we do. I still do that. 
I know you do. Yeah, but my neighbors like it as well. They say you like, we like your music, so we're just enjoying wow. it. Wow, they didn't have a lot more music, did they? Yeah. Do you remember I used to play Garage? I know. I used to scream at you. Turn that bloody racket off! <laughs> Well, I had the same thing from my mother when I was listening to uh, uh, Beatles and the Rolling Stones. She used to shout at me as well, turn that racket down. But <laughs> With the ice broken, Dre faces his fears and accepts an invitation to the family home he's been avoiding for so long. Change the guard. Welcome to the grass. But will he find the inner strength to talk about his experiences of the divorce? Yeah, I mean, over the years, it's kind of comes down as, you know, we begin to realise and understand for other friends and, you know, their situations, kind of what you were going yeah. through. It was a hard time. I think your dad was going through some personal stuff. I was going through some personal stuff. And uh, I think we were sort of, instead of putting together, we were pulling apart. But do you not think it was maybe a bit weird from my perspective that the whole, the whole... You know, going to private school and being, you know, one of the only divorced families there and the whole stigmatism. No, I didn't, because my, my sole aim at that point was to give you all the stability and a good education, and by God, I was going to do it. And that's what I did. And I, and I don't, as I said to you, you know, um, maybe when you're at, at that age, it was important for you to have all the right things, but I just couldn't do it. But that's it. After you see people's houses, you know, you know whose people's houses I'm talking know, about. I know, I know. And you used to just walk in and there's this room and there's this room and there's this wing and this is the games room and this is the snooker room and da 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 You just felt like, you didn't feel like you, you were worth anything, really. And like, you mm. come back, you know, and you remember, it was just, we didn't have any carpet, mm. we didn't have any sofas. We'd, we'd, in fact, I think we had these know, garden I know, chairs. I know. It was, we had three of these garden chairs, not even this table. I never want to be poor again. I never want to be as poor as we, we were living in this house when I was like. Mm. Mm. This, this is fine. <laughs> that's fine, because that's your dream. <laughs> Hopefully, now that you're talking, you can get rid of all the emotional baggage. Still and not going to then... wanting things. I do always want things, but now I, yeah, I'm not walking to a I know, shop, you know. I know, but then how, how much of things you're going to want? How much of things you do, you know? Well, you, you can't really blame me for going out there and trying to live a lifestyle that, mm, No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. And I'm not. <laughs> you were very sort of, very particular in some ways, like mum, you know. Inherited it from you then, haven't I? Probably. Probably. Distinctive taste. Yeah. I kind of shut things off that, you know, are emotionally difficult to deal with because it's just easier to do. You know, you have to realise that you have the power within you to confront those things. It was, uh, it, was, it was good to see her. It was good to see her. I hadn't, I, I needed to see her. I didn't like to see her at Christmas for like, the last past three years. So, yeah, it was good to see her. It was just us chatting about a lot of stuff that we haven't really spoken about before. So, it was, it was cool. Just one month ago, Dre Hennemuller's spending was out of control. He's been set a new money plan and has started dealing with the emotional issues that fuel his shopping addiction. Dre is now sticking to his new budget, but there's one last area that needs to be addressed. Dre's seemingly endless desire for bigger and better electronic equipment. So, Dre, you've been given a budget of 150 quid per month for technology and gadgets and gear and gizmos. I'm not going to try and tell you how best to spend that money, because, frankly, that'd be like taking coals to Newcastle. But what I am going to do is try to help you remove those psychological triggers, which I think have been causing you to spend over that amount of money, as it is, on the gadgets that make you feel good. Do you show me what starts to get your pulse racing? What do you think? Anything grabs you? It's just too lowbrow for you? It's a, little, it's a little lowbrow. It's a little lowbrow. OK, we'll go upstairs. I bet you there's something in here that you want, Trevor. It's pretty nice. Yeah, my one of those. Hanging on my wall at home. What would it mean to you to leave this shop with that? I would be happy, but I don't know. Let's it's... keep going, because it just gets better and better here. Yeah, that. That is sick. It's sick. They call it, like, you can tell the difference between the bottom and the top. Well, I can yeah. see it anyway. That you really want, yeah? Oh, yeah. Are you really like Yeah. It? Come round here, because it does just get better and better in this shop, and I'll show you um, something that may float your boat even more. 
So you know yeah, that that is savagely big. You can see here how the scale of achievement, the scale of goods, the scale of what they're asking you to buy just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. There's no end to it. It just goes on and on and on. And you know that as well as anyone. So there really isn't anything that you can finish and take care of by buying stuff. But perhaps when you think about the equipment representing the loss that you had as a child, if you make that emotional like you did at the weekend with your mother, you can see that actually that there is a way to reach a solution. It doesn't cost you money and it doesn't go out of date. And I believe you, had a, you achieved more at the weekend than you would do walking out of here with a 10 grand credit agreement in your back pocket. Do you think that's true? Yeah, that's, that's fair cop, definitely. Benjamin walks Dre away from the expensive world of mega-sized televisions to the more affordable models. I sell like 10 of these TVs in a day. Exactly. This is just ordinary. What you're responding to over there is the excitement of it, isn't it? Yeah. It's the rush. Yeah, definitely. But you now know you can get that sense of achievement from doing stuff with people, like with your mum, from building bridges with your mother, with your family, with all those people you've fallen out with. I want you to leave your wallet over here. Anything else? So you're not allowed to stop here anymore. It's the end of Dre's five-week financial overhaul. How you doing, man? Hi, Dre. How you doing? Okay. And with enough money left in the budget to pay off the first instalment of his student loan, Dre has invited some friends over to celebrate his newfound solvency. Sit down and go on. I'll be out in a service call. Finish this out. Instead of serving up the usual spread of takeaways, Dre is cooking up Jay's pizza recipe. His friends have certainly seen a change. Generally, I've just seen him wearing, you know, a lot less new clothes. <laughs> pizza looks OK. I'll just turn that down. Just being just a bit more um, practical with spending. I think he's taken it quite seriously. Um, I think it was looked like it was just going to be a bit of a laugh to start with, and then... You know, he started to think about really where all the money's going. Uh, he's not looking too bad. Thinking about what he's actually spending rather than just chucking a credit card behind the bar and saying drinks from me kind of thing. That's a pretty good, pretty good pizza, if I do say so myself. I could put Domino's out of business. But... I think he's found it a bit of an eye-opener. I think we all have, really. It's sort of, you know, made us question our own behaviour as well. Made some pizzas, guys. Oh, good well. Well. Right, right. well, I think that's the vegetarian oh, one. Amazing, that looks gorgeous. It's vegetarian, and I think this is for the meat eaters up here, I think. Scavengers, there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are these cheaper than buying, like, normal pizza? They are. Way cheaper than Domino's. Well, I'll have a quid. Domino's will, what, be six, seven for that? So if I call you up at, like, one o'clock in the morning, and you deliver them to me? <laughs> for you, anything. <laughs> Dre has improved in the kitchen at least, but Jay and Benjamin want to find out just how deep these changes really go. You've been doing your budget now for a month. Do you think it's become part of a routine and got a bit easier? It's, it's getting better. I've been spending a bit on electronics, but it's just mainly cables to the projector yeah. that I bought, so I'm a little over budget on that, but not too much. I think what definitely makes it easier for you is that if you do overspend, you can identify where that overspending is coming from. Because I think what you've now got used to is dividing up your areas of spending, yeah. whereas before you had absolutely no idea where any of your money was going. So, Dre, you've made terrific advances with your money and with the practical sides of things. I'm wondering how this has translated to advances on the psychological or emotional side of the work we've done together. Um, I've been speaking to my mum a lot more and um, the kind of cutting people out of my life. I've kind of decided to re-establish a few old friends, uh, you know, old connections that I've kind of lost. Can you see that on a very subtle level, when you remake those connections with people, you're actually reconnecting yourself to your past? Yes. It's sketchy, but mm. yeah. I, I can see it's, it's something I have to do. I can't just run away from it constantly. Well, that's terrific, because... Before, you really were using money to replace what you would have been I, doing. I personally that. wouldn't have thought that to start with, but now, in reflection, I can see that it's, it was just stuff designed to distract me, um, just to entertain myself and just keep me going through without having to think about yeah. um, you know, what I'd left behind. Keeping that dark stuff at yeah. a distance. And I think if you continue that, you'll feel that you gain more control over your behaviour and your life is less stressful and you're more focused 
and more able to achieve the things you really want to achieve. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely becoming more focused in terms of not having to worry about other kind of issues that I've suppressed in the back of my mind, and I just can concentrate on what I have to do now as opposed to yeah. how to keep that under control. I think Benjamin and I have both been really surprised at how much you have accomplished because when we first met you a lot of your spending patterns were so entrenched you know the way you were so into clothes spending and especially with the electronics and it's amazing the way that you have been open to sort of not spending in those areas. But yeah I wouldn't have personally thought I would have been able to do it to start with but it's gonna be a bit more of a journey definitely to completely sort of sort myself out. But you feel the journey's started. Started, started and I'm, I'm on to the next route. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.